What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the week 13 waiver wire ads. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at Notorious KRO. This is the, of course, the Angle of Pursuit podcast. You subscribe, you rate, you review, you do all the good stuff, you help the show out. It really is appreciated. Uh, with me to break down the names that you need to be targeting this week in a very weird week. Uh, Brian Twining, we are here. It is week 13. Uh, the playoffs either start or yeah, I mean, pretty much every league. If, if you're, if either last week, this week or next week are your, are your playoffs. Yep. So it's, and if you're not, if you're not, uh, in the playoffs, quote unquote, you're battling for seating, you're battling to make sure you lock in that last spot, all that good stuff. So it's playoff or- time. If you're like or, me in my two home leagues and you've already clinched the number one spot in both of oh, them. So. Or if you're like me, you're having a tremendously terrible season <laughs> and all your and half your seat rosters are, are not uh, competing. But uh, I do have one team that has Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, and uh, Travis Kelsey. So uh, <laughs> when they win me a championship, I'll be buying some jerseys and, and rocking them for sure. Uh, feeling really good about that team. The rest of my teams are are, are, are dumpster fires and very uh, perfect perfect compliments to my 2020. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the names you need to be adding, though. We'll start at the running back position. There's a couple names. Uh, and we'll start with Devonta Book. Or, Cam Akers, rather. Just a little preview for who we're going to talk about next. Uh, Cam Akers, 29% rostered. Had a decent game yesterday, but also kind of came along in the, at the end. Had a big run to kind of supplement his numbers. Uh, shouts to the, the Niners for uh, for getting not only the cover, but but the big dub on the field. Uh, nine carries, 84 yards, a touchdown, missed. Final stat line looked great. 61 yards came on one play. Yeah. Uh, Brian, we were talking about a little bit before the show. Like Cam Akers is somebody that, from a talent standpoint, I'm really excited about. I loved him coming into Florida State. I loved him. Uh, didn't really live up quite to what we expected at Florida State. Definitely saw flashes, though. Um but this backfield is so messy and it's Darrell Henderson one week. And then you think, okay, it's Darrell Henderson. It's his job. And then Malcolm Brown gets to work. And then, and then Cam Akers is, you know, oh, McVay can't even trust him to carry the ball. And now Cam Akers is the guy. And it's just like, I don't know that whether I'm playing for seeding or playing to win in the playoffs, I'm going to be comfortable starting any of these running backs, but we're also in a position where, between COVID and injuries and all that stuff, we might be scrambling. So, so what are we doing with Acres? Is he somebody that, um, if you're scrambling, you're you're considering and and potentially playing? Yeah, I think it. You know, if you're in a really tough spot, and say it was like this week where you had Jonathan Taylor, you had the the Ravens backs. Of course, you were going to need to put somebody in and cam Akers is one of those guys that he can he can produce those home run plays like we saw yesterday with that 61 yard touchdown you know and if i'm a team that's going into the playoffs and i've clinched a playoff spot right now i would be looking to add a guy like cam Akers to the back end of my bench in case of a covid situation that happens with the rams backfield and say he's the last man standing then you're going to see just ridiculous production but as far as if i'm in need of somebody to give me you know, a safe floor to get into the playoffs. Uh, he, I cannot trust Acres. He's a bench stash right now for, for further along into the playoffs only for me. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of with you. Um, now, if you like in terms of upside, in terms of the ability to take one carry and turn it into a long touchdown, Acres is definitely that guy. Uh, so if you're scrambling and you've been kind of piecemealing everything together and now you're, you know, between injuries and just not drafting, you know, a ton of early round running backs, you're, you're looking for something. I think it makes sense. I think, uh, you know, him or Darrell Henderson would be the options I'd want to target in this backfield. It's just, it's, it's going to be gross. So it's really dependent on where you're at. If you have better options, I would highly recommend going that way. Um, but if you're desperate, and you're looking for someone that can help you, it's it's not a bad alternative to look at. Uh, as I mentioned, Devontae Booker is somebody else we're adding. Uh, 9% rostered as of right now. Uh, Josh Jacobs, ankle sprain. Um, the, supposedly, he has a shot at playing this week. It looked pretty gnarly in the game. 
Uh, he obviously left, didn't come back. Um, that game was just kind of gross in general. We were talking about how terrible uh, that was to watch on, on Sunday. But, hey, it's football, so I'm not going to really complain too much. Exactly. Um, but it, if you're a Jacobs owner and you don't have Booker, well, then, like, I, I would – whatever fab or whatever you need to do to get him, get him. Um, if you're not a Jacobs owner and you're playing the Jacobs owner in the playoffs, yes. you're battling that's a must add go crazy. Um, or even if you just, you know, a good stash, cause it could look fine. And then all of a sudden they could do an MRI and it could go, Oh, it's not as good as we expected. Or uh, he could play it, play through it. And then all of a sudden he's hurt again. And then he's out. And then in weeks 15 and 14, you're, you're, you have a, you know, lock and loaded potential RB one in an offense that wants to feed the running back and, and bookers look solid uh, at different times this year. He's been getting some decent volume. So obviously if he, if Jacobs misses any sort of time, Booker should see a, a sizable uptick in volume for sure. Yeah. You know, Devontae Booker is a guy that they've been trying to utilize over the past few weeks, seamlessly trying to keep Josh Jacobs healthy for the playoff run. And, you know, with Jacobs nursing an ankle injury now going into a game against the New York Jets who have yet to win a game this year and in a in a spot that I thought they would compete with, you know, most of their offense healthy, they completely laid another egg. That offense is completely lost in terms of being able to execute down low, just too many mistakes. And now they go up against the Raiders who they got to get back on track after this Atlanta game. So I don't see any reason for the Raiders to push the issue with Josh Jacobs he may be active on Sunday, but who's to say that they're not up 14 nothing, and then they just decide, okay, let's let's rest Mr. Jacobs and Devonta Booker. The rest of the game is yours. Like I think this is a spot, unlike the Rams situation, where I would probably be comfortable in an RB3 situation or even a flex play playing Booker this week going up against the Jets in a game where the Raiders are a little bit over a touchdown favorite, I believe, right now. Um, in a game that they should dominate, and they should dominate on the ground in order to win this game. They should dominate, but they should have dominated Atlanta too. <laughs> so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the one thing I will say is if you are scrambling and both of these guys, you can't get them for some reason, or you want to set up backup claims, Frank Gore is not the most terrible play in the world. Like I know it's gross. I know he's a hundred, um, but this is a Raiders team allowing the fourth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Uh, the Jets offense has looked better despite lo not looking very good last week. Um, so if you're just looking for a pure, pure volume play, if you're in a, you know, point per carry league, if you get volume that way, um, I, I don't hate the idea of adding Frank or if you're desperate, uh, Brian, let's talk about some receivers. Cause there's actually a bunch of names that are incredibly interesting. Uh, I feel like it's like a week four, week five waiver wire. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, start with Debo Samuel. The first two guys are, are going to be a little higher owned, but uh, they're available in almost half of, of Yahoo leagues. So if they're floating around on your waiver wire, they are players to be adding. Uh, and with Debo, man, he looks so good yesterday. Uh, obviously, you know, the Niners, it's, it's funny how good they look when they're healthy. It's almost like they're a good team. And, and when they lose key pieces like Debo, like Boster, like Bosa, things start to fall apart a little bit. Debo had 13 targets yesterday, 13, caught 11 for 133 yards, looked explosive, looked great with his yak, his, his yards after catch. Mm -hmm. um, and for a team that was really scrambling to find receiver help, now obviously – you know, we should see Kendrick Bourne and probably Brandon Ayuk both back next week after they uh, come back off the COVID list. But uh, Debo is still the the WR one in this in this offense, and uh, somebody that if he is floating around on my waiver wire and I need receiver down the stretch, uh, it would be my first and 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 highest uh, uh, highest sought after target. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Debo Samuel is clearly the number one guy there, regardless of how what his depth of target actually is i mean you know he gets the majority of his yards in the yak as we saw yesterday he's like a running back once he gets the ball into his hands even more so than what aj brown can do when he's completely muscling up defenders um you know i think this offense kind of goes through the running game and debo especially while george kittle is out i feel like debo uh, takes over that kind of safety net that george kittle offered the quarterbacks whether it's nick mullins or jimmy garoppolo they like to run a lot of 
a lot of jet sweeps with with Samuel. Just get the ball into his hands because he's their most dynamic playmaker. And they get a matchup against the Bills, who, you know, last week we saw Keenan Allen beat them. We over the over the year, it, guys that move around the formation, they've had re- a lot of difficulty in defending because Samuel's not going to line up in the traditional, you know, far outside position for a wide receiver being covered by Tredavious White. So we're not going to have any worries there. And then look yeah. going forward into the into the fantasy playoffs, they're going to get Washington and they're going to get the Dallas Cowboys in the semifinals of leagues, which everybody wants a piece of that defense in terms of fantasy. So when you're looking at a guy who could potentially be a league winner for you, if he's still out there, go grab him. 100%. Uh, another guy that is a little higher owned, but uh, definitely worth your time if he's floating around is Corey Davis. Uh, obviously, that game a few weeks ago against the Bears was really frustrating where he saw three targets, no catches. Uh, since then, six targets, seven targets, three targets, 67 yards, 113 yards, 70 yards with a healthy Ryan Tannehill with an offense that seems to be clicking. And even when Derrick Henry gets volume and, and gets production, they still find a way to pass enough. I mean, between A.J. Brown and Corey Davis being, you know, so much of their passing attack, it's easy to funnel the targets to these two guys. And Davis is somebody that, you know, has missed time and, and has underperformed a little bit uh, at blips. So that's kind of leading to his his, his roster percentage right now. But um, somebody that down the stretch, I'm very comfortable adding and playing. Yeah, I mean, very similar to, to the kind of role that Debo plays is the way that these – the Titans passing offense on the outside is really only AJ Brown or Corey Davis. And Mm -hmm. with teams having to stack the box and worry about Derrick Henry so much, these guys are seeing single covers. They're not seeing safeties over top. Tennessee is running a ton of play action passes, which is giving these guys plenty of opportunity to find space on the outside. Ryan Tannehill is, you know, he's again, leading in the tops in the league in terms of like yards per attempt. They they're throwing the ball down the field. They're not getting short, short receptions. And when you're looking at fantasy matchups, they got Cleveland, Jacksonville and Detroit coming up here, all games that they should be smashing them Mm and games that Ryan Tannehill may throw the ball 20 times, complete 15 of those for 300 yards in those. So I'm, I'm, I want a piece of this Titans offense going into the fantasy playoffs for sure. hundred percent totally with you. And I, I love the, I love the way Corey Davis is trending. Uh, Let's dive a little deeper and find guys that are a little more widely available. And we'll start with Denzel Mims at 7%. Uh, I know it's the Jets. I know it's St. (laughs) Donald, but uh, I think he's worthy of uh, of a look, especially if you're, um, you know, scrambling a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of gross suggesting any sort of Jets wide receivers. But I mean, when you look at... When you look at the way that this team is playing right now, they're constantly playing from behind, which means a ton of throws from Sam Darnold. You know, uh, Jamison Crowder, he w- was thought of of going to be that guy that was going to see, again, double-digit kind of targets, and that that didn't really come to fruition yesterday. We saw a lot of Denzel Mims, Brashad Perryman, both of those guys seeing eight targets, both of those guys going down the field, and Darnold seemed unafraid to – throw it up there in one-on-one situations and Denzel Mims he had a four he had four receptions yesterday uh for like 61 yards I think it was he could have had a lot more he had a, he had one called back because of a holding penalty he had one called back because of an offensive pass interference he is a beast on the outside the you know it he plays for a team that's constantly going to be losing. And when you're looking at the terms of volume, he's had seven plus targets in four or five games since returning off the IR is four plus receptions or 62 or more yards in four or five games since returning since the IR. Like this guy is our wide receiver one in a bad team. That's going to be losing. I want every bit of that, especially at the back end of my bench going towards the fantasy playoffs. We all know you normally win fantasy championships by those one-off players who have just good matchups going in mm-hmm. and or who are seeing good opportunities. Yep. And Mims is double check, check. Uh, let's stay in the state of New York, but let's go up North and let's talk about Gabriel Davis, who is the kids, a stud uh, came out of UCF has had plenty of opportunities with Smokey with Smokey Brown out uh, seemingly steps into the role vacated by Smokey Brown. Now that he's on IR, um two of the last three games he has at least three catches at least 70 yards and at least one touchdown um so he's he's being involved this isn't a blip he's done these things before he's had games where he's seen a little more volume um and put up nice yardage totals he's also had games where he hasn't seen a ton of volume 
uh, but has found the end zone, which is all that we, you know, we really care about. So, um, you know, for a guy who's basically available in almost every fantasy league, uh, if you are scrambling at receiver and you need somebody who can help you down the stretch, especially catching passes from Josh Allen, uh, Gabriel Davis is absolutely worth uh, taking a shot on. Yeah, he's one of my favorite guys. I had him on a few DFS lineups yesterday, just knowing the kind of playing time he sees when John Brown's out. He plays close to every snap on offense when John Brown misses. Like yesterday, it was 97%. Earlier this year, it was 98%, and then 100% in two other games that John Brown missed. So he plays opposite Stefan Diggs. So you know you're getting a decent matchup there on the outside. And yesterday, Josh Allen only threw the ball like 24 times, and Gabriel Davis saw four of those targets. So you know, he's 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 going to be involved in these next at least these next two games with John Brown out. They get San Francisco, who, you know, San Francisco is going to score on Buffalo, I would think. So Buffalo is going to have to try to get downfield on them. And then they're going to play the Pittsburgh Steelers, who Buffalo's defense is not going to stop Pittsburgh. So Buffalo is going to have to go downfield. And with the, as aggressive Pittsburgh is, you're going to see a lot of downfield shots in that game. So give me give me the, the beast of a man, Gabriel Davis, for the opportunity of another touchdown. Yeah. Um, and with the Niners and, and some other teams, LA probably we'll see kind of how it affects. Uh, there's some new COVID regulations in certain counties where the teams can't practice and or play. So those games may be moved to better locations for these players to, to out to play. Uh, so Gabriel Davis, I think it's a little nice little uptick there too. Um, Last but not least, if you're scrambling at quarterback and you need a guy who can help you, uh, it's really gross, but it's Kirk Cousins. It's 40% rostered. Um, last two weeks, he's gone over 300 yards and three touchdowns. He said two or more touchdowns in four straight weeks. Um, 292, 314, 307 last three weeks in terms of yardage. Uh, and that's without Adam Thielen this week. He had 307 and three. So if he gets Thielen back this week off the COVID list, has Justin Jefferson, um, obviously Dalvin or Madison in the passing game. Um, you know, there there is potential there. And he he gets a home game with Jacksonville, and then he goes at Tampa against that defense that we they funnels the pass, funnels to the passing yes. game. Um, obviously the, the game at home against Chicago isn't ideal. Uh, but for the next two weeks, you can roll with Kirk Cousins and and feel pretty good about where your quarterback situation is. Yeah, and this is the Jacksonville Jaguars team that made Baker Mayfield look good, even when Baker Mayfield is missing wide open guys in the end zone. So, you know, that goes to show you how bad this Jaguars defense yeah. has been. And then in terms of how safe Cousins has been this last four weeks, he has 18 or more points in in Yahoo leagues in four straight games. So you're looking at a guy who's offering a safe floor. It, he has the upside to give you that three, four touchdown game as well, especially if Dalvin Cook, we'll see what, what comes out of that situation going into this week. If they want to hold him out or yeah. if he's limited at all, they would go a little more pass heavy. Yeah. Um, and Alexander Madison, I assume hopefully the the cook owner or somebody in your league is rostering him but on yahoo he's only rostered in 32 percent of leagues if you have flexibility at the back end of your bench these are the guys you want to be adding now yes going so, into the playoffs yeah so that way you're not scrambling or you're not you know like you don't want to like you, you want to clean out that back end of the raw of your roster with guys who aren't going to play if you have you know three stud receivers that you're going to play down the stretch there's no reason to hold on to some marginal guys that you're not going to roster and you're not going to play so clean out that back end of the roster get rid of that extra tight end get rid of the extra quarterback the bye weeks are gone pick up guys like alexander mass like Devonte booker guys that you could be using down the stretch as well as receivers like davis or mims um and you may not feel great about them this week but if you feel but news could change information could change and all of a sudden you're 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 so ecstatic to have them on your roster and being able to start them uh so when you're looking at waiver wire ads those that's also something to think about this week let me just suggest one more quarterback streamer and we were going to talk about mike glennon no, I have to. It's it's extremely gross, and I can't believe that I'm actually saying this. And people who watched the game last night are probably going to absolutely destroy me in the comments section. But Mitchell Trubisky, he scored 22 fantasy points in Yahoo yesterday, threw for three touchdowns. He gets the Detroit Lions this week who just gave up Deshaun Watson boom game. 
the same Detroit team who he threw for three touchdowns against in week one. And then he gets, guess who? The Houston Texans, who have also been absolutely atrocious against the pass this year. With a newfound kind of running game with David Montgomery, he looks he looked really explosive. Mm-hmm. If he's going to funnel the, the targets to Allen Robinson, who on Detroit or Houston is going to be able to guard that guy on the outside? So I'm just saying – it, he's not good, but if you're looking for points, like Mitchell Trubisky could could produce, and he runs. Yeah, and and you know, like like Darnell Mooney, like had the ball like near him when he when he when it was running routes instead of Nick Foles missing him by ten yards. Um, and a little little nugget on the old Green Bay Packers. It's funny that like. Like their defense is so bad, you start any running back against them. Yes, and Jonathan it's Taylor, and David Montgomery were cast offs that all of a sudden rushed all over them. So we're lo- I'm looking at next week where they welcome the Eagles. Hello, Miles Sanders, the Lions. Maybe we get DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, Swift back. Uh, Ca- Carolina, maybe McCaffrey's back. If not, Ooh. Mike Davis, and then my Titans, oh. my Titans. <laughs> Derrick Henry is running for like 350 against this offense. Oh this my defense. goodness. Um, so, and, so some... Derrick Henry is back to his old tricks again. Look, at, it's winter time, and you know Tennessee is just going to yeah. beat him the rock. Mm-hmm. It's 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 so predictable. It's nice though because I was it, it, as as a Titans fan, I was watching that game really closely, and the offensive line has been a mess the past couple of weeks. It it came back together. Adding Quesenberry yeah. at left tackle uh, seemed to clean up. We'll see how yeah. see if uh, Saffold can get back at some point. Um, but things are getting better, and and it, the Titans have a clear plan. They know that running backs have only a certain amount of mileage, so they start them a little slower. They they saw the workload building up in the first couple of weeks. Like, oh, we got to pull back a little bit, and that meant you know some other Devonta Devonta Foreman. Which by the way. If you can be, if you have an extra spot, Donta Foreman is worth your time. Derrick Henry is built like a tank, but that tank can get derailed at at any moment. As as scary as it sounds, as a Titans fan, um, and if something happens, he's he steps in, he gets the workload. Uh, or if you're a Derrick Henry owner, like getting rid of that extra receiver, the extra tight end and, and, and kind of locking in that, that protection, even though, you know, we, he won't be doing what Derrick Henry is. If he's 70% of it, you'll be pretty happy with better than, better than scrambling or better than your league mates picking him up and starting him against you. So yeah, uh, a little food for thought there. Uh, Brian Twining. This was a lot of fun. As always, we will be back on Thursday to break down the whole slate, take a look at it from a betting angle. Um, and then we'll be back on Sunday morning to talk uh, through all the week 13 stuff to help get you set to win. Hopefully give you the some plays that you should be using, some players that you should be benching. Uh, Never su- ever suggesting to sit AJ Brown again. <laughs> or James Robinson. It was <laughs> yeah, fun. no. Yeah, don't. Turns out, really good players who see volume are uh, probably should be in your roster, even in matchups that are less than ideal. Uh, for Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to y'all next time.